I'd like to talk about eco and ego. My contention is that the two destroy each other. Eco is derived from the Greek word oikos, which means home. Eco is the root of the words ecology and economy. Every time I say eco in this talk, it's brief for ecology, by which I mean the community of all beings. Ego is a sense of a separate self, existing in contrast and comparison to others, a sense of me that is enclosed in my bag of skin. Eco and ego are never at peace with each other. You can't be at home in community if you're enclosed and separate, comparing and contrasting with others, feeling superior. Ego, as far as I can tell, is always attempting to destroy eco, while eco is always trying to infiltrate ego. My contention is that ego is about as sustainable as the modern world, which is obviously not sustainable at all. As I speak, 200 years of industrialized society are coming to an end. Ego is destroying the entire biosphere, taking everyone with it, including polar bears and rainforests, as well as you and me. Eco, on the other hand, is probably the only thing that could save the planet, and it is doing this right now, or attempting to do so. The only planet-saving action that you can completely trust is that of non-humans. Most other solutions, solar and wind and recycling and so on, are still dependent on the fossil fuel economy, and so long as that is going on, the future is bleak. I have been studying both, eco and ego. By the way, they sound the same in Tamil and Malayalam, ego, because we can't tell the difference between k and g. This can quickly become perplexing. Consider the possibility of misinterpreting cold for gold or coat for goat. J. Krishnamurti, a 20th century seer and educator, was an important figure in my life. I attended three Krishnamurti Foundation schools where students and faculty studied the human psyche, our ego nature, and all the ambiguity and unrest and idiocy it causes amongst human beings within organizations, between countries, and empire. Through observation, dialogue, and inquiry, I got to learn about the ego's divisive role, how it separates people, how it invents all kinds of other complexities to represent itself, how it manipulates human faculties, and how it then generates empires, social class and caste, patriarchy, and ecocide through power structures. I was and still am interested in the natural environment. Wherever I have lived, wherever I have gone, every place, I learned from non-humans. I investigated nature and ecology throughout my education and later at the undergraduate level and still later through apprenticeship and working with various people while traveling. I live in a small community in the Western Ghats of Kerala. We're a diverse community with a minority of humans collaborating in and around a majority of non-humans, by which I mean plants, animals and fungi, as well as streams and clouds and the entire forest, as well as the Western Ghat Mountains, which forms the tilted edge of the Deccan Plateau, the giant shield of the southern part of the Indian Peninsula, slowly bucking into the Tibetan Plateau, kicking up the Himalaya. In fact, I am the Western Ghat Mountains speaking right now. Yes, I am. No, this isn't some mystic nonsense, nor am I making a mountain out of a molehill. This is pure ecology. Western Ghat air is blowing out of my mouth, which I had just breathed in and am now exhaling. Every cell in my body is made of these thick jungles waters. I've been here for about 28 years, and I'm a happily recycled biome, 
recycled and reconstituted in some way or reformed, regrown, molecule by molecule by the winds and the waters, the plants and the animals of this land. The modern culture encourages you to discover your authentic self of defining your identity, of me being me only and you being you only. This has no meaning in natural habitats where everyone is themselves, but they are also interconnected. Everyone is a shapeshifter at times, going from individual to communal to individual to communal. They just don't make a big deal about it and they don't try to find out or seek the sensation of being a separate self. Now it's becoming cool to get rid of your ego through various spiritual practices. It's also cool to, to plant a forest in a sense to grow an eco. There are many claims on various types of forests and habitats being restored and there is a lot of great work being done. But the most amazing thing is that nature is doing it on its own spontaneously. How did the tropical rainforest form a hundred million years ago and how is it still forming today? Outside my window a forest is being born and it's doing it on its own. No one instructed it and it didn't get a PhD. Your body likewise is forming today as it did when you were born and it is doing all kinds of incredible things today, right now, without having a doctorate. It, is, it has done these amazing things all along, regardless of all the positive or negative things you did to it. Whether you're sick or healthy, your body does the hard work of getting you up and moving every day. Your body is the seat of biodiversity and ecology for you. Wherever you are, it is the extended fingertip of the biome and it is the universe exerting itself via who you are through the body and person that you are through every pore of your skin. The work of your lungs is as much a part of the complexity and beauty of nature as the stars in the night sky. The air you breathe is also doing its incredible atmospheric work, whether you're in a room or in a wilderness. It obeys the laws of the natural world, whether you're shut into a machine or not. At all times, the laws of ecology are at work within you, around you, and anywhere you go. You wouldn't be here if they didn't work. I wouldn't be here. I began to fall into this sense of ecology, of being ecology unfolding as a conservationist living in and amongst other people, humans and non-humans. I began to take the lessons of ecology very seriously and also those of ecology. There's consequence to both. One leads to a living planet and the other to a dead planet. Imagine if instead of all the machines and books and items of furniture in your room, you had creatures, a monkey or a bird or a beetle or some frogs or plants or trees. Imagine you had a bird flying around your room right now or a bat or a snake in the corner, snuggling up under your bed. Replace every gadget with a being. Imagine what a different life that would be. Not just a dog or a cat, though those are wonderful too, but a wild creature. For this is what ego cannot stand, others, certainly not as equals. Eco, however, is a totally inclusive huddle. There is always room for more, even if you occasionally squabble and even if you have to kill to eat. That's a one-on-one -on -one act of transgression, both as you live and as you die. You're good for the rest of the community. In fact, Every molecule of you is good for community. Just think of it. When you sweat, the butterflies lick the salt of your skin. When you breathe out, the plants love it. They breathe in. When you go to the loo outdoors, the soil and the microbes and the plants love it. And when you sneeze, the viruses love it. And when you eat, you're making room for more creatures inside you that incredible human microbiome inside you, all those worms and amoebae and bacteria and fungi that dwell in and on your body, that are your body. I've seen how ecology brings diverse life forms close to each other, how it makes us all tangle. 
how it is born moment by moment through the actions of creatures interacting, creating this beautiful world together. I've seen and marveled at how diversity is a result of non-human exploration and creativity and how the whole thing behaves like a symphony with billions of life forms doing extraordinary and unique things. I live in a forest, you've got that by now. In fact, I live in a garden in a forest on a piece of land that is rewilding, that is becoming more and more itself after all the horrible deforestation that happened over a few centuries ago. I've watched it becoming a forest. More trees, more tall trees, more species of trees on this land that, that had once been totally cleared. There are many more creatures here than when I first came. In fact, more by the second, because the kind of protection has been given, even if it's on a small scale, is enough to make it proliferate. It's busy making more of itself. Plants, spiders, porcupines, ferns, frogs, streams, clouds, forests. Here you can gleefully be part of ecology unfolding just about through every act you do and everything you don't do. Of course, humans do critical things do. Gardeners, for instance, use their expertise to protect, nurture and propagate many rare and endangered species of plants. This number has risen into thousands over time in our place. And given that the Western Ghats have been deforested and transitioned to in industrial plantations and other activities by roughly 90%, each of these protected species is critical. Once a species becomes extinct, it is extinct for all time, and with it, the habitat in which the species relies. For me, finding out about what it is to be human, or even to ask who or what is human, I like to do it in the company of butterflies and ferns and giant trees and hornbills squawking their way overhead and the owls and frogs and flowers. I also explore what it means to be human in the company of other humans. But this is a trickier affair because of ego. Here's a word that gets thrown around a lot, Swami. We all understand what that means and how it is used. A person who's ch already chosen to take a certain path in life, generally a spiritual path and has relinquished his desires. But did you know that Swami derives from Swama, which means self-willed. People will think I'm going to refer to some saffron clad man chanting mantras with paste on his brow. No, I'm making reference to all the magnificent creatures I live with, all of which are self-willed and appear to be purposeful, free, exuberant and active, whether small or large. They appear to be doing exactly what they want. They have disagreements from time to time. When others infringe on their lives, they don't bother bringing up a claw, a tooth, or all of their muscle, muscle power. We can certainly learn the art of defense from them. We can also learn to love and to live, for we can feel many beautiful things being evoked in us through their exuberance and joy. We can learn to be tender, to make beauty by being beauty and to relax in the greatness of our own bodies, no matter who we think we are. We can learn to not be neurotic. We can learn to rest in peace. Ecology is concerned with individuals in relationships, but it is not concerned with identity. Ecology is a dance between being an individual and being part of a community a transcending of boundaries, a dance, an orchestral symphony. In fact, I believe it is past time we shift our focus from enlightenment to enlightenment, filling ourselves and our places and our homes and our surroundings with life, opening to other beings, transcending our sense of separate self to a wild play of interbeing. Other creatures will be delighted they will play with us and join us, and together we will be able to make the world a better place for all, humans and non-humans included. Eco, I propose, not ego. 
Eco. Thank you.